Tesla just released their third quarter earnings report with a lot of good news. In today's video, I wanted to look at some of those details and share my own kind of predictions going forward. Today, we're looking at Tesla. Good morning from Japan. My name is Trey, getting in touch with you with this Tesla video. Just so you know a little bit of background about me and this channel, uh, we talk about entrepreneurship, finance, investment, growth, and different things like that. I've been in Japan here for 10 years. I've also been a longish term Tesla stockholder. Uh, my cost basis currently is kind of like 100-ish bucks, split adjusted. Um, so I've been in it for a few years now, really enjoying nice gains, and I've already sold off to cover my initial cost basis. So all the stocks I have right now are basically free, and they're growing well, and they will continue to grow well. But welcome to the channel. Please take a moment to hit the like button and the subscribe button, especially if you get value from this video. But let's jump right into the earnings report. Starting out here at the top, they have a bunch of highlights. They mentioned that they have a $5.9 billion increase in cash and cash equivalents, up to $14.5 billion in the third quarter. We know that they did a $5 billion stock offering back in September and quickly sold out of all of their stocks. So that's one quick way companies can build up their cash position. This is really helpful for Tesla in these times of pandemic uncertainty. But it's also really helpful for Tesla, as we'll see in a minute, because they're building factories all over the world and expanding very rapidly. They also mentioned that they have operating cash flows of $1.4 billion in the third quarter. They also mentioned that they had a 9.2% operating margin in the third quarter, leading to an $809 million operating income. That's gap op operating income, which leads us to a gap net income of $331 million, or an $874 million non-gap net income. And so with all this growth going on and all these good numbers, it basically works out to an EPS, earnings per share, of 27 cents, which is a 170% gain over what we got last quarter. That's super exciting to see. They also mentioned record numbers of vehicle deliveries leading to record profitability and record cash flows too. It's super exciting to see these numbers coming out of Tesla, especially when even, I don't know, six or eight quarters ago, like everywhere you looked on every news outlet, they were like, Tesla's about to go out of business. They're done. They're about to run out of cash in two weeks or whatever. And, you know, as a result of that, the stock price was like super beaten down. I think I got my cheapest ones at like 180 or something like that after they had already gone up to like in, into the twos and 300s before the split. But it's really dope to see that they're growing new factories all over the planet and a big cash position and great cash flows going on as well. Taking a look again at profitability, it was up 2.53% from last quarter and 4.62% from last year in this quarter to a 23.5% gross margin. The gross profit works out to be a hair above $2 billion on total revenues of $8.7 billion. The gap net income finally worked out to be $331 million. And taking a look at the trailing 12 months, the operating margin has worked out to be 6.3%. And we're expecting it to be growing into the coming quarters as well. So this is what we've been hoping for. This is what we've been expecting to see. Um, but on the other hand, there are a lot of people, especially the Tesla naysayers, people who are saying it's a bubble, are saying Tesla is only achieving these kinds of profit numbers because they're selling their credits to other automakers. I did a video a couple of months ago talking about the potential inclusion on the S&P 500. And to get listed on the S&P 500 index, you need to have four quarters of straight profitability. So everybody was like, oh, they did it four quarters straight. They're going to get onto the S&P 500 index, which basically would shoot their stock price up because there are millions and millions of people around the world auto investing in the S&P 500 every month when they get their paycheck. But there were also a lot of naysayers saying, no, Tesla is only profitable because of these regulatory credits. And what that means is basically different governments around the world, what state or countries say, hey, automakers, you need to make a certain amount of very, very efficient, very clean cars. And if you're not making that number, then we're gonna penalize you at the end of the year and you're gonna have to pay us a bunch of money. So Tesla's cars, being fully electric, don't make any pollution. So they're just racking up these credits, which they can turn around and sell to other automakers who make, you know, big gas guzzling cars. And so naysayers are saying, it's because you're selling those credits, that's the only reason you're profitable. That logic doesn't quite work out because I think that's been factored into Tesla's whole equation for years now. Um, but additionally, if you're not selling 
tens or hundreds of thousands of cars, just getting a bunch of credits isn't going to do you any good anyways. You have to be making really good progress. And that those credits are just kind of like the cherry on the top that get you over. All that being said, these credits aren't going to last forever and Tesla is not going to need them forever anyways. Additionally, the regulatory credits from this quarter uh, went down from last quarter. So they made 427 million from those credits last quarter and it was down a little bit to 397 million this quarter. So that's a little bit more you know, food for thought for those naysayers. But zooming back out to the business as a whole, don't forget Tesla is not just an automaker. They also do power storage. They're getting into like solar panel production, which is growing nicely. And they do a bunch of other things. But let's take a look at some of the numbers. Automotive revenues have gone up 47% quarter over quarter and 42% year over year to $7.6 billion. And automotive gross profit has gone up 60% quarter over quarter and 72% year over year to $2.1 billion. The energy portion of the business, working with energy storage like Powerwall and Solar Roof, has seen record deployment of 759 megawatt hours. In areas like California where the grid is unstable, they're expecting larger growth, even larger than other areas in the country and the world in the coming years. Tesla mentioned that they expect this energy portion of the business to grow and become just as big as the automotive part of the business in the coming years. That's like mind blowing because right now the non-automotive part of the business only makes up like 13% of the revenues where the automotive part makes up kind of like 87-ish percent. And so that's basically going to be like the energy portion of the business is going to be like six or seven or eight X growth in the coming quarters and years here. Recently, Tesla talked at their battery day presentation about a lot of different aspects of manufacturing, production, materials and material sourcing, and how a lot of the progress that they've been making will lead to more efficiency, therefore lowering their costs and raising profitability, but also cool advances like more battery life, more battery density, so that Tesla drivers will be able to drive further on a similar sized battery. They went into like a lot of detail on that and there's like millions of YouTubers covering that kind of stuff. But basically, this is going to increase their moat even further. So a lot of automakers around the world are like, hey guys, we finally released our new electric car. And it's like way more expensive with a way shorter range than even like Tesla's from five or eight years ago kind of thing. So their moat is going to be getting bigger and their profitability, their margins are going to be getting bigger as well in the coming years. More specifically about some of these changes, they include cell design, improvements in the anode and cathode of the batteries, and major advances in the production process as well. So I think it's safe to say that we're going to be seeing even greater improving profitability in the coming quarters and years. So looking forward into the future, there's like a lot to talk about. There are a lot of expectations that Musk and Tesla have put on themselves as far as like vehicle production numbers. And I want to look at that right now real quick. But after that, I'll talk about some of the other advances coming in the future that people aren't even really factoring in, I think, to a lot of the pricing. And then finally, I'll go into my own kind of predictions for the future of the stock price. Tesla is standing firm on their expectation that they'll be able to deliver 500,000 vehicles this year. Currently, they're at about 318,000. So in this final quarter, they're going to need to step it up to 182,000. For the third quarter, they did 139,000. So they're going to need to step that up by like 40% to be able to reach that goal of 500,000 vehicles. Additionally, Elon Musk has for years expressed frustration at how expensive Teslas are. And this is kind of revealing because a lot of the other automakers are coming out with cars that are like more expensive and less bang for the buck than Tesla's. But still Musk is like, dude, we have to make a $25,000 car that the everyman can buy around the world. If you break down the numbers right now, it works out that the average revenue per vehicle is a, a little less than $53,000. So that gives you an idea of the kind of market that has been buying into Tesla's recently. We know that the Tesla Model 3 starts out at something like 33 or something like that, but we are seeing growth in sales, surprisingly, of older models like the X and the S too. And these are pulling up, you know, kind of the average revenue per car numbers you know so once that $25,000 car comes out we're not only going to need much more production capacity but we're also going to see that kind of average price per vehicle dipping down I think by the time that vehicle hits the market though Tesla will have much more production 
a lot of their higher end cars will be much more saturated in the markets around the world as well. So we're gonna be seeing huge evolution of the market in the coming years. Check it out here, we have a chart of current production capacity. They say down there in the notes that installed capacity does not equal current production rate. So because of many different factors like holidays, uh, we know in China there are national holidays that are like one or two or three weeks long sometimes, you know. But there's also corona related issues. Musk has expressed frustration at California's government for forcing them to shut down, which he has also said, you know, they may eventually move out of California. I don't expect that to happen anytime soon, but, but Tesla is really aggressive about growing their production capacity and also, you know, boosting staffing and increasing efficiency of their machines and things like that. So on this chart, they show a current capacity of 840,000 units per year. So we know that at the current quarterly production rate of 145,000 units, that works out to be about 580,000 units per year, but they're saying that their current actual production capacity is 840,000 units. But taking a look at the other factories down below that, looking at further expansion in Shanghai, all the Berlin stuff, all the new Texas stuff on the horizon, as well as semi and roadster, you know, it's really not crazy to expect production capacities of like two million, two and a half million, even just coming up in like, you know, two years kind of thing. And speaking of those factories, they did include some pictures in their report of how things are going in Shanghai and Berlin and Texas. Berlin, like last time I saw Berlin a few weeks ago, I felt like it was mostly muddy fields with trees around it, but now it's becoming a factory, you know, and I heard they're gonna start moving in equipment um, coming up here. Texas is just actually a muddy field right now. Um, but I think they're expecting to have it up and running in about a year's time and start actually be pushing out cars. Judging from the speed that they were able to get Shanghai up and running for Model 3 production, I don't think that's too aggressive of a goal. I don't think that's unreasonable. So if we do see production capacity boosted to 2 million, 2.5 million kind of over the next couple coming years, they're kind of going to be on the same level as a lot of the other big automakers in the world. And that says a lot for potential revenue growth for the company and also potential stock price growth for investors like you and me. So I mentioned auto revenues being about 86% of the company's revenues right now. Um, they also mentioned that the small 13% portion of the revenues that are non-auto will be growing drastically in the coming years. But I also wanted to take a look at some of the other factors that I haven't mentioned yet and kind of have been under the radar in some cases for the last few months too. Number one is the full self-driving option. So this has been an option that people have already been paying for when they buy their car, though they haven't been able to actually use the feature yet because AI and algorithms and researching and all that stuff has been going on behind the scenes. So Tesla is always monitoring all of their drivers, figuring out how people drive, how people you know react in dangerous situations and things like that and the AI is learning and studying. And Tesla has announced basically in the last few days here that coming up in this month and in November, they're going to start rolling out full self-driving to their safer drivers. Interestingly, they know who their safer drivers are and who the scary, crazy street racers are, and they're going to start rolling it out to the more conservative drivers to start building up more data and to start seeing how it works and start refining kind of that process, you know? And so we might see full self-driving rolling out here across the board in the coming like months. And I wouldn't be surprised if it's like everywhere by the middle of next year. So a couple of interesting factors when you're looking at full self-driving is that first of all, it's a huge extra option that you have to pay for when you're buying the car. I was looking at reserving a Tesla Cybertruck here in Japan and adding the full self-driving feature was like a seven or $8,000 option. And one of the cool things about software in general is that once it's coded and once the systems are built, you know, you don't have to keep making that thing. So margins can be much higher on that. There's also a huge portion of income they've already received for the full self-driving, which they haven't put on the books yet as earned income because they haven't provided that service yet for the people who've already paid for it. I super wouldn't be surprised if there are a lot of current drivers who say, wow, that's actually really, really dope. I want to add that to my car. You basically can just go on the website, pay the money, and then it downloads onto your car and you're ready to go. So that can be another huge source of really, really high margin revenue coming up in the coming years as well. Continuing on full self-driving, this will revolutionize the way people do everything in their life. 
This is going to change taxis as we know it, and therefore Uber, even Uber Eats, and Walt and these kinds of services that deliver stuff. Also UPS and FedEx and all these kinds of businesses. You know, if you can just have a robot truck driving all your stuff around and delivering for you, that changes the entire industry. I did do a video earlier on NVIDIA and talked about how they're also one of the leaders in building autopilot technology, which they're planning to be selling to numerous other drivers. But Tesla is leagues ahead of NVIDIA when it comes to full self-driving. So I think we're going to see an entire revolution of the way people use their cars in the coming years. And the more that traditional automakers fall behind, the more they're going to have to be like, hey, Tesla, can you sell us that technology? Hey, Tesla, can you give us some of your batteries too? Because we like need your batteries because ours like suck. So we're going to see that happening more and more in the coming years, like for sure. Tesla's also started to offer auto insurance, which they didn't even really mention in this entire report. And what ends up happening when you can track all of your drivers, if you know Bob Miller is like the hyper safest driver in the world, and he also has full self-driving, like his insurance can be really cheap, but you're still gonna make a margin on that. And that level of information gathering is, is like so far ahead of any other insurance company. You know, and so Tesla will be able to basically choose, hey, we want our profit margin on insurance to be X percent and then they'll be able to set it like that. And it's still gonna end up being cheaper than all the other traditional kind of insurance companies. So we have all these different little things coming up on the horizon that's just like, wow, that even just that little insurance thing could like change the whole way insurance works in the future. So Tesla is like revolutionizing like everything they touch. So going back to some of the more nitty gritty numbers, like I spent a bunch of time building some projections and a lot of them are conservative. Like right now we're seeing kind of 27% gross margins on the automotive section of the business. Um, I went ahead and just continued with those margins, even though we know pretty likely that those margins are gonna be getting fatter because of all the improvements in manufacturing and battery and even battery manufacturing, as well as these different technologies they talked at Battery Day and things like that. So those margins could be going up. I think everybody's expecting Tesla to be able to put out 2 million cars a year by the end of 2022. So I played around with a lot of these numbers, looking at potential revenues, looking at potential output, looking at potential growth of the power and energy portion of the business. And it's kind of like, no matter how you slice it, the stock price cannot be less than 600 bucks or 650, you know? But if we're looking at the more optimistic sales numbers, the more optimistic margins, then it could be 800 or 1,000. And those are all based on a lot of the factors that we can look at today. So far this year, the pandemic hasn't you know, totally upended the entire business or anything like that, like we've seen in other sectors, but we don't really know how things are gonna go with the economy and the pandemic in the coming years. But it's pretty safe to say that demand isn't going away and they will continue to innovate and they'll continue to be changing the world. And so if you don't own Tesla and you're wondering, can I still make a few bucks on Tesla? I think it's pretty safe to say that you will. If you'd like me to do a more in-depth video talking about how I break those numbers down and some of the math and stuff like that, let me know down in the comments section. It seems like so far, a lot of the viewers on the channel are okay with the, the way I break things down so far, but if you'd like a little bit more in-depth, uh, let me know. We're seeing the current price right now at 422 or 436 after hours. I think that's safe to expect it's gonna go up before Wall Street opens again in whatever 12 hours it is or whatever. And yeah, I think you know it's safe to expect kind of at least $600 share price over the next couple of years. And so depends on your investing style. Is a 30, 40% gain over two years good enough for you? Only you can decide that. But as for me, I basically am just buying a little bit of Tesla all the time and it's worked out super good for me. So what are you gonna be doing? Are you gonna be grabbing more Tesla now? Are you gonna be selling some of your shares after it jumps up when the market opens? Or are you just gonna be buying little by little? What do you think? Let me know in the comment section down below. I'm also really interested to hear like how long a lot of you guys have been investing in Tesla. Cause I know there's been this huge wave of new young investors jumping on the boat, especially since the split recently. But I'd be really interested to find out like who's the longest Tesla shareholder in our community here. So let me know down in the comments section. So thank you very much for checking out the video. Looking forward to the next one and to getting to know you guys more down in the comments section. I love you guys and have a great week.